Welcome to Thursday Night Knives. Coming up, I'm going to show you a new knife that I got inspired by Scott Babb. Probably not what you're thinking it is. Uh, and let's see. Gentleman Junkie Knife Giveaway, Tucson TS-175. And then uh, Ben Belkin's going to join us uh, from Jack Wolf Knives. And we're going to just chat, talk knives, talk about the new gunslinger, Jack, etc. cetera. Uh, hope you're all doing well tonight. Uh, I, oh, man, I... This is like a magic elixir. I feel suddenly better um, just listening to the news and listening uh, to just the craziness. Uh, it's great to turn my back on that for a while and uh, and talk knives. I had two great interviews this week, one on Monday, one Wednesday. Ground fog, great to have you here, man. Uh, and last night I, I spoke with someone uh, uh, whose videos I've been watching a long time, and it was really cool to finally meet him and talk with him. Fernando Salome, good to have you here. Evening, Knife Junkies. Jim, Bob, excited to be here. Love you all. Well, we love you, sir, and we're excited you're here with us. Oh, pardon me. Dave, how you doing? Dave Everett with a, a different avatar tonight. Good evening, Bob, Jim, and Junkies everywhere. Glad to finally have that stitch on your side, Bob. Yes. Yes. You know what? And the funny thing is, is when I had jocks here in my video, I said, now I know I don't need this knife. And little did I know I did. Jesse, good to have you here, Jesse. Evening all. Evening to you, sir. Blade Ogre, always a pleasure. Uh, hello all, he says. Hello to you, sir. Five doors with us. Bob, Jim, junkies, greetings, he says, uh, except flopped around. Craig Vincent, how you doing, sir? Happy Junker Day. That's right. Yeah, Junker Day. Beginning of the weekend. That's what I like to say. And what a weekend it's going to be. An all-day volleyball tournament hours away from home. It'll be awesome. Actually, it will be cool. It will be cool. Have a nice day. Good to have you here. Uh, what up, Junker Lowe's? Well, what up with you? Wearing an Emerson CQC8. I like the wearing. Wearing. Sometimes I have to be careful not to use that. Like, this isn't fashion. I need this. Uh, uh, CQC8, an OD Green G10 blade. Oh, nice. Uh, that sounds great. Uh, with, I'm, I'm sorry, OD Green G10 a blade with 50-50 uh, VEF serration. Oh, my gosh. That sounds awesome. Will be good to have you here. Uh, evening, junkies. Bob and Jim. Uh, evening to you, Will. Uh, you, as uh, others who have already chimed in, stand to win this knife here tonight. This thing is pretty cool. Tepe Designs. Robert Douglas. Good to have Robert with us. Uh, a, a fellow Robert, Roberto, Bob, Bobby, Rob. Uh, but you are a Robert, sir. Uh, that's how I know you. So welcome. Nick EDC here. Hey, everyone. Bob, Jim. It's good to have you here, Nick. Always a pleasure. Uh, have a nice day, says thumbs up. Smashed. Excellent, sir. Thank you. I appreciate that. LCV Blades Edge. Good to have you. What's up, everyone? He says, well, what's up with you? Uh, any interest in this? This thing is cool. Stephen Clayton. How's it going? Our resident uh tkel knives aficionado actually steven let me show you something uh and i will uh, be showing everyone at the same time check this out i got the second prototype uh just this very evening uh from tim uh tim kell knives of the knife uh, we are collaborating on and it is so cool now this is a resin 3d print so um it's not metal but those are handle scales, like it's separate parts. They're bolted together. It's got the grenade grip, the appropriate jimping now, and and the uh, that diamond shaped uh, glass breaker is all dialed in. And it doesn't. It does it's not a hot spot. I was worried or, or you know concerned, uh, but it's perfectly placed. Um, I'm really really happy with this. Uh, so I had to show it off. And uh, hopefully, uh, Stephen, you get your hands on one. Uh, hopefully, this um, I, I it's they're big boots to fill. Uh, Tim Kell's knives, so uh, I'm glad. I, I'm thrilled that he took this on. I'm I'm really excited. It's very cool. Can't wait till this is metal and it's on my belt. LCV Blades Edge says, "Hope everyone is having a better night than the last." Why? What happened? Wait, wait. wait. What happened the last night? What happened? Uh, Robert Douglas says, sorry for missing lives. Uh, music is my way. Uh, stopped collecting, but might uh, chance in Twilight's, in Twilight's years. Uh, music is your way. God, that's you're always a little poetic, Robert. I must say in your in your comments. 
um, you don't have to ever say sorry for missing lives. It's like, welcome back, you know, come back in whenever the door is always open. Uh, Robert says, uh, if I can enter, give me E9 oh, will be. I got you. Uh, Northern Knives, <laughs> what's up with you, man? Uh, what's up, all? Hit that thumbs up. Uh, uh, what's up with you, man? I, uh, that sounded, uh, you know what I mean. Agent 001 is on the purchase list, says Stephen. Excellent, excellent. The Agent 001, and then soon to be followed by uh, by the others. Uh, one of them will be single edged, and then and then a number of other uh, blade shapes. Really nice blade shapes that Tim came up with for that handle. Uh, so it's going to be a line of agent knives. And by the way, this is this is really cool. You can kind of pinch it in that area. And uh, I've been shown this kind of scooping cut. And instead of that C cut, you know, the C cut, that's a, that's a great cut too, where you kind of stab in and make a C and pull out. Uh, that's, that's something that Mike Janich teaches in um, Marshall Blade Concepts, I know, and the thigh that sort of scooping C cut. Well, I've, I've been shown this kind of scooping cut that's like this, uh, but, but it, it wasn't shown to me where you open your grip. You should always have a nice tight grip on your, on your knife, but it's kind of blocking and uh, entering uh, on the soft part of the arm and then scooping kind of like that. And this knife, the way it's kind of thin, you can kind of pinch it to do uh, certain things in, in Kali. Sometimes you're, uh, you're trapping with your thumb like this, and then that jimping is a great place to to get uh, purchase if you're pinching there. Um, so anyway, uh, I'll set that down. And uh, yeah, I'm very much looking forward to it, and I'm glad it's on your list. Josh, good to have you here, Josh33025. Hi, he says. Hi, that looks like an idyllic spot by the lake over there. <clears throat> this old sword sign me up for your new tkl design bob reminds me of the tops yes you've mentioned that i love the tops rapid strike uh this one has uh, a bit of a uh a, a, a napoleonic complex by comparison uh the um <laughs> but yeah it has a lot of what i love about that asymmetrical fighter double edge it's got some jimping and a bayonet grind uh and then the um the handle has the the thumb rest that you'd see sort of a little less extreme, uh, but the kind of thumb rest you see on a uh, um, mm, 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 mm. Uh, Dave, you have one. Uh, I really want to get one. Uh, not combative edge, uh, different kind of compliance edge. Uh, so, yeah, lot, lots of different influences going into that one. And uh, but but primarily my love for the asymmetric fighter here but here's the other one of the other main influences for this right there the attention to detail mercantile medium fighter uh in bayonet grind double edge uh richard briscoe uh, briscoe briscoe richard briscoe good to have you here sir uh last one had a nice uh wait see uh that last one had a nice blade but too small handle why um oh you mean on this one here uh it is meant to be it's it's a four finger grip uh but small this way i think you might mean uh it is it is meant to fit the shoes of this knife here also a tkel knives knife uh it i wanted it to fit in the uh, footprint of that so same length blade same length handle uh and about the same width um, at the, at the peaks of these little finger things. So, and, and, you know, I got to admit, I, I guess maybe I designed it a bit, uh, since this one fits my hand really well, I, I guess I also sort of designed it to fit my hand, uh, really well. <laughs> so maybe that's a little a selfish thing, but I think, I think, uh, if you have giant mitts, uh, it'll still work. Cause I have a friend at work that I always, uh, bring knives by to check out. And he's much bigger than I am, and his hands are bigger, and uh, he liked it. It fit him well. Uh, you know, I think it was more crowded than my hand for sure. Uh, but you'll see. Um, yeah, thanks for uh, thanks for checking that out. This, by the way, is the TKL uh, MR1 Marine Raider One. It's uh, based on the Night Stalker platform, but it's 
uh, ground on the other side. So it's a Pakal style knife uh, created for a Marine Raider unit. I think number one or a Marine Raider unit out on the West Coast anyway. So what's going on out there, huh? Uh, let's see. We had a little bit of a technical snag at the start, but uh, look at that. We just smoothly ran right through it. Uh, Dave was talking about he's glad that I have this stitch in my hands. So I think with that said, let us now get to a pocket check. Oh, <laughs> so yes, indeed, in my front right pocket, I had my my Microtech stitch in the ram lock with aluminum handle, and uh, this is basically uh, basically a perfect knife. It's a it's a knife that manages uh, to pull off a, a cutting edge to handle ratio uh, that that I ordinarily don't go for. Uh, but man, it does it so well, and 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 actually, uh, it inspired me to carry as my uh, emotional support knife uh, which i'll show in a few minutes here uh it inspired me to carry that knife because it has similar a similar layout just in a different uh, size and format uh so yeah this is the microtech stitch ramlock with the m390 mk proprietary m390 uh and it's by sebastian berenji he's the uh he's the designer of borka blades and uh, of course, teamed up with um, Mr. Marfione over there at uh, Microtech. I love that Eagle Talon logo, by the way. I think that's super cool. And they created the the automatic, and then uh, a little while later, this past, uh, I guess, the beginning of 2023, they released the Ramlock versions. Um, I'm really happy with the Ramlock. I find it to be super strong because, yeah, I've uh, done the spine whack tests and um, not tests, but I've just whacked it randomly on the back of things. And uh, it it hasn't slipped or anything. I, I heard that the first round of stitches may have had a little bit of slip here and there, uh, but I think they tidied that up right quick. I think this is, uh, it's just a, I, it's a very, very unique. And it's, it's one of those knives that to me, uh, you know, you're always going to be the guy who designed the stitch. Uh, just like uh, if you're Andrew Lincoln, you're always going to be uh, the main character of Walking Dead or, you know, something like that. Uh, anyway, Mark Salva. Good to have you here, Mark. Glad to be here. Howdy, y'all. Howdy to you, Mark. Uh, it's been a while and it's good to have you here. Uh, Will B says, I'm excited about T. Kell's OPs series. Ooh, I don't know about that. I don't know what that is, but I was hoping that tonight I would have my FLN to show off. I ordered um, uh, the new Karambit uh, collaboration with Jared Neve uh, that just recently dropped, and I am very excited. I got it with the integral metal ring uh, as opposed to uh, you can get it without the ring, and then you can put the the, the um, Guardian grips on it. All right. This century grips on it uh, that have the ring in g10 uh, i opted for the solid piece uh ground fox says that's a wicked looking knife yeah it really is I, it's funny i said to my wife uh, yesterday uh, i held this up she was cooking and i was like you know i was like this is this menacing at all to you or or is this just kind of like a pocket knife and she's like you've you've like lost a little bit of touch bob yeah that 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 looks like a menacing menacing knife and I think really it was the teeth that got her the pointy, pointy, stabby blade and the teeth. I'm a, a I'm, I'm really swinging hard back towards serrations. And uh, I know that uh, Cold Steel and Emerson have I mean, Cold Steel and um, Spyderco have, have always kept the love alive. Uh, but recently, um, just really noticing how excellent the Microtech uh, um, serrations are. Uh, I've been digging them. And I told you that that X X ring video I saw uh, really sold me. Uh, Robert Douglas says that reminds me of a huge blade of uh, Mickinson design. Of course, Willemson. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, it yeah, I could see that. Uh, Mikkel Willemson has a lot of the 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 overall curve like that, and he does do a lot of big obnoxious choils. Uh, this in this case. It just works. Uh, ordinarily, I'd be like, God, I, I, that 
Choyo would be a deal breaker, almost was a deal breaker. Um, and then I just uh, allowed myself to let go and fall in love with it. And man alive, have we had some good times so far. Uh, 76 red pills. <laughs> good to have you here, man. Uh, thumbs up. I appreciate it. Uh, you like that? Okay. So, uh, let it, let us go to the next knife on me today was my Jack Wolf knives, sharp shooter, Jack, this thing. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, Gunslinger Jack, Sharpshooter Jack is the slip joint model upon which it, it is based. But uh, bigger blade, this is hand rubbed S90V, uh, really beautifully done with that long pole, looks so classic. And then you've got that gorgeous ironwood handle. Yes, it is really beautiful. I keep uh, meaning to rub oil into it just, just to see just to see if it, you know, what it does to the wood, but it's so nice. It feels good. It has a warm feel to it. Uh, feels very, uh, but it feels very, um, unified with the bolsters. Like, what am I trying to say? You can't feel the transitions. That's what, not unified. You can't feel the transitions and it's, uh, it's great. And the action on this is stupendous. And, I've kind of damaged up the clip a little bit because I've been carrying this in my back left pocket and I lean on stuff like like uh, that's one of those uh, things that apparently they teach CIA spies is uh, you can spot Americans because they lean. They're always leaning on stuff. And uh, yeah, so this clip is not as pristine as I would like it to be. Yeah, a little bit of scuffing there. But I, that also means it's like getting the first dent in your car. You're not so worried now. Now you're not parking like five miles away from the entrance, you know, in the in the corner uh, parking space. All right. Next up on me, I've just been carrying this one a lot, uh, taking advantage of the, the last few days of the cold weather, uh, because this is going to be a harder one for me to carry uh, with light or warm, uh, warm weather clothes. Kilkenny, good to see you here. Sweet Stitch. Love the serrations. It's on my list. Uh, it's at a number of spots. I, I have seen it. I've been lurking uh, Microtech pages uh, all over the internet, and I've seen a lot of stitches. So I don't think you should have too much trouble if, if it's something you're aiming to get uh, right now. The Jed Hornbeak Necromance on my 3 o'clock. Uh, <laughs> I, I really, really love this knife. Uh, it is... Uh, obviously very good to look at. It's a nice looking knife, but I, I'm going to bring it beyond that uh, and say that it, the feel is amazing. The solidity of it, uh, the, the fit and finish uh, both are just amazing. It feels good in hand. It, like uh, I know I say this uh, every time I bring this out, but uh, you know how sometimes you'll put, <laughs> I don't know how often you might do this, but you'll, you'll pick up a stone or a piece of jade or, or something that just pleases the hand pleases the touch like a worry stone well this has that feel in all the choils in the hand everything about it is so comfortable to grip and it locks in the, the ergonomics are incredible uh 3v really great grind great design very thin um haven't really used it for anything except cutting paper and uh you know impressing myself with it uh it's a fighting knife. It's a self-defense knife. I don't, you know, it's, I, I don't have any reason to use it. Uh, thank God. All right. And last, my emotional support knife uh, was inspired by the overall layout of that. And that is the Sage 5 2. Uh, Craig Vincent said, I'm sorry. Uh, so the Sage 2 was my ESK, my emotional support knife. Uh, and yeah, that big choil. It's more comfortable in the choil. Uh, this was 2014 Christmas gift from my wife and I love it. I haven't carried it in a long time and it is a, a great knife and a, a fun one to uh, flick and it's got really great washer action. And yeah, I've been talking a lot about washer action, even though I've been carrying a lot of uh, bearings, I've been loving and, and trying to get back into uh, more washer knives digging them so what did you guys have uh, and what was craig vincent's uh last comment jim if you still have it uh in the queue there um yeah let me know what you were carrying look at that that's a that's a handsome lineup of knives and i gotta say looking at it 
uh, I'm a very, very lucky man, and I appreciate uh, my good fortune. And uh, yeah, uh, only one of those was given to me this time. <laughs> so that's cool. Uh, okay. What'd you guys carry? Let me know. Heath, the knife freak. Good to have you here, man. Hello, all you crazy knife junkies. Bob, hey, Keith, I've been I've been digging on the uh, the uh, pictures in your Instagram feed of your shop, and and that it looks like a a uh, a lot of good stuff happening there. The lab, if you will, it looks pretty cool. Uh, will B says Grimsmo Norseman, Hinderer XM twenty four Battlefield pickup Sponto, Microtech Ramlock Stitch. Great minds, of course. Uh, the Wee Ziphius. That one, that one passed me by. Like a warm summer day. Uh, Kaiser Begleiter XL, Maxace Neptune, TKL, uh, TK, I'm sorry, TKL Knives Night Stalker, uh, CQC, the Riot Exo, Olight Baton 3, Karis Bolt V2. Quick question Max Ace Neptune. Uh, what do you guys know about the out the front? Um, is it does it it looks great? Uh, it seems inexpensive. Does anyone know if it's a good knife? Uh, the new out the front, and I can't remember what it's called. Uh, from Max Ace, Stephen Clayton Jr. says Remnant Alliance Scourge, uh, Mini Tonto, uh, TKL uh, FLN three. You've you've got three of them. That's cool because I know one of them has a ring, one of them doesn't, and I'm not sure about the third. Um, uh, the TKL Knives Guardian, the Night Stalker Combat Grade, the Piranha, uh, the FMF. Yes, I, that one is cool. Now, I had to look that one up after last week's show. I was like, which one is the FMF? You mentioned it a lot. And that's the that's that clip point, uh, the Frogman Tactical, right? That is a cool knife. Uh, the Accomplice, the MR1, uh, the Regiment Blades. Uh, oh, uh, low vis uh, pro the Colonel Blade, and the Midgard's Messer Mini Axe Crudo SD5. Okay, let me ask you about. Uh, oh, the handle, the handles on your T Kells. Um, I'm curious uh, because when I was ordering my FLN, it took me forever uh, to order. They have so many cool uh, options, handle options. There it took me forever to to finally decide. Uh, I went with um. What is that? A battleship. Battleship. Uh, so anyway, Stephen, uh, let me know, you know, the, the kind of things you go for in your uh, handle materials. Uh, Blade Ogre says, carried the clever girl, uh, the Microtech Ultra Tech, Ultra Tech 85. Oh, is that the UTX 85? The shorter, the 85% size. Uh, the Bucks, the Buck Exert, Exert. I'm going to start this from the top blade over carrying the clever girl, the Microtech ultra tech 85, uh, the buck exert, the case clasp, the Jack Wolf knives, Benny's clip, the, uh, LT right knives, switchback, the Cobra tech hidden auto bone trapper. That one sounds cool. That sounds really cool. Uh, the Baron sons outrider. That's a spay and the dino spike and sleazy ogre of your design. So, uh, the Baron son, Baron son out of is it Alabama? What do you think, Blade Ogre? What do you think of Baron son? I <clears throat> I have not been moved to. Uh, I I do have a Bally song from them, uh, and they do have a lot of nice looking folding knives. But I've been the most tempted I've been is the the Bowie knives, and the timing has just never been right. Uh, but you know, I'm all about. Uh, uh, you know, supporting an American company. So I'm going to have to get a Bowie knife from them. Stephen Clayton says two FLN with removable G10 ring and one with metal ring. Okay, cool. And uh, I hate to keep asking, but uh, is yours double-edged? Uh, I, I I ordered mine. I specifically please, you know, because I know he can bring it to a zero edge. It's not exactly, uh, you know, going to slice cheese, but it'll it'll do gashing and splitting and all that stuff. Uh, okay. Uh, 76 red pills says more Eldris cheap, but quality under three inch blade handle fills hand. No slip. Very nice. I've, I've been, uh, I've been really digging this, which I got in Germany actually. Um, that when I went there, 
in uh, over Thanksgiving. Uh, that this I've been carrying this a lot too, got, kind of dropping it in the bag. It, I'm not putting it on my body, uh, but this is the companion, and it's my second Mora knife. Uh, it's really my first modern one. I have one of the old wood handled, red handled ones, and I like that one. But uh, honestly, this one is far superior, a lot more comfortable. And uh, and has been described by those who know as a great fighting knife, uh, actually. Uh, Jawako, good to have you here. Today's carry, uh, Wood Civivi Voltaic. I love, I love the way Civivi does uh, does their wood. Benchmade Mini Freak, uh, Case 1988 Stockman, very nice. And of course, the Fixie my dad made. How cool! Went old and new school today. I love it. Uh, Stockman uh, has been my most favorite uh, multi-bladed slip joint recently. For a while, it was uh, two-bladed jack knives, um, and and then most recently, it's been the Stockman. So, 1988. I was a junior in high school. 1988. <laughs> uh, Craig Vincent says the stitch is menacing looking, but I think. Maybe my new black talent two serrated may be even more menacing looking. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Uh, I mean, it's so menacing looking, it's almost comical. And you might be able to, uh, if you have a real kind of um, green in the gills cop who's, uh, you know, busting you for it, you could say it's some sort of specialized tool. You know, oh, this is the newest way to cut, uh, you know, uh, air conditioning duct or something. Uh, Northern Knives says, my Microtech Daily Carry saga continues. I feel you, man. Uh, picked up an amphibian in urban camo. Ooh, to add to the tactical beard comb and annex. Very nice. I like the urban camo. So that's is that on the handle and on the blade, the whole thing? Jeez. You got the inside scoop on some sweet knives, man. Hmm. I do make good coffee. Robert Douglas says, I have a blade hard to open. I dare anyone to too easily. <laughs> Wait, I have a blade. Ha ha oh, my God. So sorry. I have a blade hard to open. I dare anyone to too easily. I don't get it. But uh, I do get when when the blades are too hard to open, like on some of my old slip joints and they tear your your fingers. Uh, you're like, that's not what I'm talking about. You don't sometimes, sometimes I got to say when I'm reading stuff. So please excuse me if I'm being thick. Uh, this old sword says today's carry the Nova one of fine choice, sir. Uh, the stitch Ramlock also awesome. It was like, uh, there was some, uh, you know, a brother from another mother happening, uh, today with your carry the stitch auto. Ooh, nice double stitch, uh, Contigo in M4. Great knife. Uh, Cold Steel 8015, Spider Co. Autonomy Auto. That's a cool one in LC200N. That's a weird, that's like, it's like good looking the way, uh, or cute the way ET was cute. Uh, you know what I mean? It has a cool look, but it's like, it shouldn't be appealing, but it it is. Anyway, uh, a lot of Spider Co's are like that. Williams Oso, Williams Oso Rako Zukuri. Special fat carbon fiber integral. Oh, this one in M390 and Olite. Uh, what is that? Javelot? Javelot? Have a lot. Uh, this thing here, the Williams, uh, Williams designed uh Osoraku, Osuraku Zukuri. Uh, that is cool. So integral fat carbon handle with M390, and then that Williams like assassin shape. It's so cool. Fernando Salome says, uh, in my backpack, I have the Obad Beast. Oh, oh, yes. So the D-Bad Beast. Uh, so Donnie B all day uh, worked one of his, worked, uh, had one of his designs uh, co and collaborated with Jed Hornbeek on it. It is rad. Uh, okay, so he, uh, Fernando got one. He made four of them, and I snatched the last one. Congratulations, Fernando. That's that is so cool. I think this knife is the Mona Lisa of knives. I love it. It's masterpiece. Jed is an artist. I, that's what I'm saying. Like to look at it, it's a very cool knife. Uh, I bet in hand, it's a, a similar experience to this. Like you look at this, you're like, wow, that's a very cool knife. But then when you feel it, you're like, whoa, uh, wow, out of this world. Like 
mm. and I, and I, I, I've held a number of his knives uh, at the table at Blade at his table at Blade Show, and um, I, I liked them a lot. Let me put it that way. And uh, well, congratulations on getting that one of those D bads because they are so cool. Uh, and and I can tell from the knife you gifted me, you're a big guy, so that's like seems like a perfect knife for you. All right, I got I got this one. Uh, I got your yeah because you had the Cobra Tech hidden auto bone trapper uh which by the way does sound cool uh so uh lcv blades edge i carried a qsp parrot in d2 uh masters of defense cqd mark one auto mini grip okay really cool and varied carry that parrot 20 dollars knife one of the coolest uh i think it was the first qsp i ever heard of uh, i think it was the first one to really and then they just went whoosh, uh, from there, but uh, you have that next to a Masters of Defense, which is a deep cut, and then and then uh, finishing up with what did you what was that third thing? God, three. You can't expect me to remember three things. Oh, mini griptilian, yeah, very very interesting carry. I like it. Five door uh, carried the Eclipse Tonto. Uh, that's a wistful sigh of a guy who let go of a, an Eclipse Tonto. Uh, Benchmade Shootout. That's a cool one. I really like that blade shape. Uh, and the GEC 56, which is a dog leg jack. Oh, very nice carry. Uh, and, and a good, yeah, yeah, yeah. Got three solid bases covered there. The new OTF is the Neptune. Okay, cool. Yeah, it costs 108 bucks and hits above its class. Definitely feels more premium than it costs. I'm very happy. It does have stiff uh, uh stiff switch though uh i got the dagger i i really I'm, i might be interested in i was kind of looking for one but i i couldn't find them today but yeah that looks cool what is it? uh it reminds me a little bit of the scarab the microtech scarab mark good to have you here mark i just got the gray man scales that's that's these I think these are the gray man scales with the that the Grayman Burl, I dig it. Uh, Stephen Clayton says the most decals have the Grayman, uh, two Hades, one Warrior grips. Okay, uh, Hades. I think the those are the FLN is single edged, one double edged. Excuse me, metal ring has just the tip of the reverse edge sharpen. Oh, that's a nice, that's a nice touch. I like that, man. <laughs> I mean. I have no doubt. I don't know why. Uh, maybe because it's because he carries so many TKL knives. I have no doubt that if he weren't carrying anything, you still wouldn't want to tangle with Steven. And uh, I just get that feeling. Uh, but with all the TKLs in hand and with all the different uh, configurations and everything, yeah. All right, Jeff W. says, puttering around. Well, Jeff, good to have you, Jeff. Uh, puttering around my shop today carrying just the tops El Pioneero uh, and the uh, Crocatool Zwerve. <laughs> the Crocatool Zwerve. Uh, that El Pioneero is cool. I like it. Uh, I know people are like, oh, that's a glorified steak knife. Well, aren't they all? You know, is this not a glorified butcher butcher's knife? You know, basically. A little clip taken out of it. Uh, Anthony Kitchen. Good to have you here, Anthony. WD forty. Mm. All right, all right. What am I not remembering? Because I I don't remember lots of things. But WD forty on what or for what? Um, just help me, <laughs> uh, Mark. So it's like uh, it's like when you're in middle school and they're like, uh, put the question in your answer. Uh, and I realized teachers said that because like me, they were old and they're like, I can't remember like two minutes after what I asked you. Mark Salva says artisan cutlery, sea snake. I love that knife. Mike Emler's design. Uh, the Civivi Vision FG, the Spyderco Sage 5. I was a sage man my day, uh, myself today too. Uh, and my always present spew. What does spew stand for again? I, I just like spew. It doesn't matter. Yeah, better spew than other things. Uh, Kyan GR 74 Kyan, nice to have you here, sir. Uh, presumably, uh, Fridays are always hard here in Greece. That's right. Greece. 
uh welcome uh from greece uh have to wake up at 4 a.m. for my favorite show. Oh, my God. I could have read this so much better, so I will. Fridays are always hard here in Greece. Have to wake up at 4 a.m. for my favorite show. Thank you very much. Hashtag time travel and knives. Uh, Protec Strider PT. Oh, nice. Uh, that, so that's the little, that's the little auto uh, Strider. And the Leatherman Skeletool in the pocket today. Hi, all. He says, well, hello to you in Greece. Uh, I have very fond memories of the one time I was there. Uh, it was my honeymoon. Razorback. Good to have you here, Razorback. Good day. And he's saying good day from Australia. So look at that. Look at that. We got uh, it's uh, it's hands around the world. It's like we're holding hands around the world uh, with knives in them. Craig Vincent says, OK, here we go. Hang on. Let me rub the eyes because we got some cold steel coming. And as I read, I will hold the talwar, very serrated, in hand, just because. Craig Vincent says, the 8010, the 8015 light, the 8020, the 8020.5, the SR1 light, the Espada XL, or the XL, yeah, the okay, so six cold steels, the Blurple PM2, the Manix 2, the Petrified Fish Havrog, the Kaiser Phoenix, the Grazioso Brass and Micarta, and a nasty little Blackwash Titanium Tucson TS370 Karambit. Yowza! So, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve knives on Craig Vincent. Craig Vincent wins. He's got twelve knives. That's a dozen. <laughs> He's got a dozen knives on him. Uh, but how, how do you resist when you have like more than a dozen knives around? Sometimes you have to just pile them on you so that you can, you know, check it out during the day. Razorback says, glad I randomly opened YouTube. Notifications have been shite lately. Uh, in the van as usual, sharpening my. Oh, um, Miabis, uh, carry small Sabenza. Uh, Savivi Crit and S90V Yojimbo. Missing anything important? What, what, wait, 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 wait. Sharpening my abyss. What is that? Uh, uh, carrying small Sabenza, Savivi Crit, and S90V Yojimbo. I mean, that is a nice lineup. I would like to... Yojimbo is a knife I would like to collect. I'm not going to, um, but I would like... You know, I used to have that M4 Yojimbo, and I sold it, uh, I sold it to Nick Martino. Um, it was a pressure campaign and I gave in, um, well, no, I, I, I didn't want it anymore. I didn't think I wanted it. Now I I'm like, wouldn't it be cool to have a, a Yojimbo collection, but nah, how often do I carry Yojimbos? Not often. Uh, so I should try and avoid that, but they are so cool. Welcome to my head. I mean, these are the kind of conversations, uh, that happen, uh, you know, when, <laughs> when I should be listening. Uh, to people who are important telling me things that I need to do. Blade Ogre says, yep, Baron's son are in Alabama. Uh, bought the Outrider in Al a Abalone and nice and a nice blue sodbuster from them at my local store. That's cool. They were both on sale, so a great value. Uh, thus, Baron's Sons is a great cherry picking brand. Okay. Um, there are some great cherry picking brands like that, like Case, for instance. Uh, if you get a great one, it's great. If you if you can be near a store that actually has them, that you can uh, try them out or uh, check them out, uh, even better. I do not. I am not in that position. Uh, I have to do my cherry picking from afar, and then it comes, and if it's no good, it goes back. Oftentimes, if it's no good, it doesn't go back. Uh, but I pretty much stopped that since Amazon and all these other places have made every uh, returning so easy. Will B says, I ordered mine off of Max Ace's website. Uh, if they're not in stock, I think they're going to be in stock at some point. All right, Will. I mean, how can I How can I not? $108 for an out the front. It's a Max Ace. And uh, I only currently own one Max Ace, the Sandstorm K. Uh, but my experience with them, they are impeccable knives. Uh, Anthony Kitchen says, look for a uh, Piranha. Oh, looking for a piranha. Yeah. Uh, 
go on the website. I don't know. I know that they did a drop not that long ago. Um, so I'm not sure when that'll be coming back around. Uh, obviously, I have no idea. But um, ah, God, I love those knives. I love his brand. He's such a cool guy. We talk on the phone a bit every once in you know a couple, uh, you know every once in a while. Uh, and it's fun. He's fun to talk to. He's a cool guy, and uh, I love Crazy Marines. Uh, this Adder Bites, good to have you here. Hey, uh, hi, hey, hello. <laughs> hi, hey, hello. Good to have you here, Adder Bites. Uh, Northern Knives says, forgot to say congratulations on 30K subs. Very deserved. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Uh, I appreciate that. It's, uh, yeah, onward and upward. It's funny because uh, the more subs you get, it kind of seems like the, the quicker you get a little bit more. I saw a jump after certain i've seen certain jumps at certain places and it's, it's kind of fun to watch but i don't look too much at it um <laughs> which i guess is obvious because of the uh daniel huff good to have you here daniel good evening bob and jim fellow junkies uh better late than never yeah and you know what daniel there's uh there's only late to the live part because you can always watch this afterward uh, i know but that's not probably not as fun uh, one thing I just want to remind everyone for gentlemen junkies, uh, this is on the block today. This is what we're going to be giving away. X Kaido says, Good evening, all. Good evening to you, X Kaido. Uh, today's carry is the CRKT VL. VL. Uh, and beyond EDC Geo, the QSP Songbird, and the Blackhawk uh, Crucible Folder. Cool, man. Blackhawk, they. So that's the the crucible folder is the one that's got a real spear point. Uh, it kind of reminds me of a of a native uh, a little bit, right? Of a spider co native, maybe. Uh, Mark says, "Can you close that tall wire with one hand?" Oh yeah, you can close them all, uh, pretty much all with one hand. So you got the the tang going up to there. So on uh, most of these. Uh, Demco design knives for sure, but even before Andrew Demco, you could do this with a lot of cold steels. Uh, when you shake the knife into that uh, and put your finger up into that forward position, uh, you're you're safe, and then you can just close it like that. Uh, they're fun to fidget with, uh, but but best not to be absent-minded uh, with those. That's for sure. Craig Vincent, I love 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 my parrot. It's actually one of the few safe queens. Uh, I worry they'll stop making it as the knife trends uh, move more from simplicity to the more gas station, less than premium, more than gas station, less than premium space. Uh, I don't know. I think, I think people are still, um, I think, I think that there is a notion that simplicity equals quality. Like just because you can come up with a clean design, the knife is going to be good. And that's not always true. Uh, but you can hide a lot of slop in a complicated design. I, I hear what you're saying. Northern Knives says, I really want to know how many pockets at Craig Vincent has in his pants. Well, at least 12. <laughs> no, no, no. He can double up. Uh, Jawako says, anyone know anything about Kaiser Cobalt 2.0 and 4V? Hmm. Amazon has it for 76 bucks in 4V, and that seems like a steal. Ha, see what you did there. Uh, well, I don't know. I don't know. Anyone know? Uh, let Jawako know. Uh, 4V, uh, I, I would assume that that's expensive for some reason, more expensive than 75 bucks, but I don't know. Uh, Miyabi is a high-end kitchen knife maker under the Zwilling Henkel Company umbrella. Oh, interesting. Okay. Okay, so he was sharpening his his kitchen knife. Gotcha. Thank you. Stephen Clayton Jr. says, I forgot one. The teeth kill combatant is at which o'clock is? Uh, uh, oh, so uh, I, I heard the story about how you came about that. Uh, and man, that's cool. <laughs> I'm glad you, you got it. I'm glad you got it. Uh, uh, yeah. Uh, that the uh, mine has a has a has a pretty pretty good value to it. Uh, so I but I appreciate it. Uh, Sword XXXY says, "Good day, guys. Sorry I'm late to the show. Well, good to have you here, Sword. Uh, we're talking we're talking some TKL, that's for sure. 
Um, Razorback says, sorry, Miyabi is a brand of mass produced Japanese kitchen knife, very similar to Shun, possibly also owned by Kai. Hmm. All right. Well, Razorback, we just heard um, uh, that it's uh, under the Henkel Zwilling, Zwilling Henkel uh, umbrella. Craig Vincent says, for people like me who are new to knives, uh, the difficulty in choosing what knives to leave at home is grossly underestimated. I don't want to leave any. The compromise is that I don't carry is I only carry a dozen. Uh, yeah, I mean, I think that that only grows, Craig. Uh, I think that only grows the more you uh, acquire and the more you collect. It's like, yeah, you, you. I mean, for me, that's why I have a bunch of knives on me all day. Excuse me, either with me or. Uh, on my person will be says uh, did you see that john grimsmo is going to be using magna cut on his knives soon no i didn't also has a brand uh new knife uh, also has a brand new knife coming he'll have a blade show and it's an integral Ooh, that sounds cool that sounds cool uh the last one they came out with was what the rask i believe four o'clock okay gotcha all right so that's the combatant at four o'clock all right uh like it uh anthony kitchen says seems like more steels are going to 3v as premium but 4v works uh great haven't tried 3v oh okay more steels yeah i've seen way more 3v than 4v eugene Krabs, good to have you here eugene hey bob sorry i'm late uh, don't you don't have to say sorry <laughs> i've been tempted to get a set of spider throwers any thoughts on throwing knives uh, I, I don't have vast experience, except I will tell you that the uh, cold steel true, true flight throwers, the large 12 inch ones are awesome. I really like them. Uh, I can throw them. My uh, my older daughter can throw them pretty well. And even my younger daughter can can kind of make them stick sometimes, too. Uh, they're great. They're heavy they're well weighted uh so i but i don't know i'm sure spider co is good too i i just for me and my skill level i need something that's large and heavy because something i've had small light throwing knives and unless you're throwing into a dart board or something uh you know it's, it's it's not as easy to throw especially if you're not good um let's see lcv blades edge says i just bought the cobalt in 4v it's 69 on kaiser's site oh all right well there you go man so i guess 70 75 was not a good deal <laughs> retirement forge funds again thank you eugene all righty sir uh all right let me get you let me get you with this here yeah uh this is one of my later more more recent recent acquisitions i think i saluted someone with this last week but Oh, well, uh, I have other stuff here, too. We'll show off. Uh, but this is the Bill Harsey design kukri. And yes, I know I did because I remember doing just this and explaining it. But um, Eugene. There it is. You know what? I'm going to put this down because I repeat myself. I want to show this. I am going to salute you, sir, with this. This is the Von Temsky Bowie by Sford. I pull this out every once in a while. It's a heavy, heavy beast. A uh, quarter inch thick slab of, I don't know, some sort of high carbon steel. So Sword is made in uh, New Zealand. Even though Sword sounds like it should be made in like Sweden. Uh, but New Zealand it is. And this was the uh, Bowie, the sidearm Bowie that uh, this guy Von Temsky made, had made for himself. He was a ranger in um, wild New Zealand back in the day. And uh, he had these made for his group of uh, roughnecks that he had with him. And they used it for killing and cleaning game and camping and all, all the good, key, all, all the good sounds uh, they did with this. Uh, really like that straight handle. Oddly enough, you can it really hold on to it well. You don't need any swelling at the pommel or any choils or anything on this one for some reason maybe it's just because our hands are built to hold sticks uh it just stays in hand really well nice big guard and a big very sharp apple seed edge all righty sir this is for you eugene thank you for your gener thank you for your generosity sir 
Ooh, I, my whole screen is going blurry. Not my whole screen, but my whole... Uh, what is up with that? All right. I guess it's focused on the... Uh, on powering the, the knife cam. X Cato says, Hey, Bob, the CRKT VL... VL oh, is pronounced VL. Thank you. Uh, after the late knife maker, Howard Veal. Uh, since you are a lover of fighting knives, his work should be very interesting for you. Okay. Got to write that down. Veal. Fighting knives. All right. I will definitely have to check that out. I, I am. I am fascinated. Patty's nuts. Good to have you here, Pat. Hello, my fellow junkies. My Max Ace Neptune half ser serrated finally made it out of customs in Chi Town and will receive Monday. Nice. Carrying my bad habits mofo and my Asher Fixie. Uh bad habits mofo. What is that? That's so familiar, but I can't think of that. And Asher Knives, he's just doing a bang up business, man. Every time he drops something, it's sells out immediately. X Cato says Veal was a karate guy who started making knives because he was interested in how to use them as weapons, if I recall. Like it. I like it. Um, it's like uh, even uh, Gil Hibben. He was a karate guy and uh, designed two knives for Kempo Karate. And both were really cool. Uh, this old sword says Kaiser Cobalt. Uh, Sebastian Irawan design is out of production and 75, uh, $76 is a good price. I picked one up and about a year ago and it's in 4V. I also have the micarta version. Oh, this one, I'm remembering this one. Um, I do remember this one. Um, has a kind of an odd shape, uh, oddly shaped blade, kind of worn cliffy. Um, I think I know that. Yeah, the cobalt. I, I know that one. Okay, that is a cool. That's a cool knife. Has a very uh, has a very uh, almost one to one handle to blade ratio. At least at least how it looks. Patty's nuts says my throwing spikes are awesome. Uh, called the beak from Amazon. Called the beak from Amazon. Fantastic at nine and a half inches and weighing in at half a pound. Uh, five to six millimeters thick. They hit with authority. Uh, oh, wait. So, Pat, are, you're losing me at the called the beak from Amazon. Are you saying that you got your spikes from Amazon or you you made throwing spikes? Because uh, I can't tell. But, yeah, those sound cool. I know that Spyderco makes a throwing. I don't know if it's a throwing spike, but it's like a like a bullet, like an elongated football that you throw and it smashes things. Um, anyway, uh, Mark says, what do you think about the beg knives? Filoso. Oh, 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 dagger, fixed blade knife, black polymer, uh, gray, eight inch. I can only find two reviews and it looks cool for a cheap dagger. Um, uh, uh, Tomas of tactical tavern, uh, did a review on the smaller version of that, which is what I would get. And I have come close to getting, um, the eight inch is cool too. Uh, it's just a little big, uh, for, me but uh i think it's beautiful i think it's a beautiful design i like the uh i like the uh proud handles uh uh that was not to you guys by the way uh i like the proud blade tang and the crown spine and all that and and it just really has the beg design language i like his design language though a little busy at this point uh maybe it's in uh as as my tastes mellow a little bit it seems a little busy sometimes with all the holes and stuff, but those daggers, the one you're asking about in particular, Filoso, I think they're sweet, and I'd love to have one. And I like that they have it in gray with the black handle. Yauko says the cobalt is on the way. The cobalt, cobalt, cobalt is on the way. Cool. I, uh, I, I always love it when something's on the way. I got something on the way. We all probably have something on the way in one way or another, uh, but. Uh, uh yeah good to hear it i can't wait till you get yours and i can't wait till i get mine craig vincent says oh the beak these are okay okay so okay got it that's awesome thank oh no, no i don't say got it like put it away but uh thank you jim that looks awesome 
Um, and, and I understand, uh, what your comment was, um, that they're called the beak. That's how you find them. Growing spikes. Interesting. I like the idea. Craig Vincent says, no mystery here, gentlemen. A fact. Standard wrangle cargo, uh, standard wrangle cargo pants can handle, can easily handle a dozen knives, sometimes more, only three per pocket. That way I can fit the two flashlights, two lighters, and the torque set. Well, you need light and you need fire. Um, and you obviously are set up for contingencies. Um, but Wrangler uh, cargo pants. I said Wrangle. Uh, Pat D's Nuts says, from Amazon, and they are called the Beak. Thank you, sir. And, uh, and thank you, Jim, for pulling those up. Uh, Anthony Kitchen says, mini SOCOM for the win. First uh mount knife in collection first microtech knife in the collection so good so you got the mini socom bravo or did you get like an old school mini socom elite because that'd be that'd be sweet too hag 90 how you how you doing man he says hi knife junkie and is waving or clapping i can never remember which that is uh stephen clayton says uh I have the TKL Raider and Night Guard on the way uh, for the from the January one drop. So the Raider, oh 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 yeah, the Raider. That's a that's a, a classic design, right? And the Night Guard is like okay, that's a ringed one, and with the small Guardian blade. That's a cool one. That's a yep cargo pants provide space for options indeed and and uh yeah when you're carrying a whole bunch yeah you need that um yeah i i tend to i tend to need most of the weight as close to my belt as possible for me not to feel uncomfortable uh like uh, for fixed blades i like them right in the waistband uh or right on the belt in the case of uh the mr1 the night stalker the combatant and the guardian i keep them on my belt like horizontally like that but uh and soon the agent 001 uh on the belt like that but uh mostly in the waistband or high up on the pocket seams the further down it goes i don't know uh the less i like it so uh yeah all right, we're going to get ready to give away this uh, Gentleman Junkie Knife giveaway knife. Uh, I, I have a feeling uh, Ben will not be joining us. Uh, usually he's here by 1020. And um, uh, we had a little bit of back and forth earlier in the week. But uh, uh, so if he doesn't show, well, we'll catch him the next time. Uh, you know, Ben's a good friend of the show. And uh, I, I always love talking his knives with him, especially when he drops something. Uh, that is, mm, you know, very, very popular. So I'm going to put this to the side, but uh, let me see here. Okay. Before we get over to uh, that knife giveaway, I just want to say real quick, when I was talking about uh, knives that inspire the asymmetrical fighters, I, I pulled a couple of them out here and I just want to show them. So I have this one. Oh, uh, well, a couple literally. And then this one, two very different examples of it. But and then to see this best to turn them upside down, actually, uh, especially with this one. Uh, I, something about uh, having two different shaped cutting edges, especially like, say, here on the on the Pinkerton, where it's a sort of Middle Eastern Jambaya and sort of a Hills Bells buoy. At least those were the those were the two inspirations for this. You have one edge that is convex and one edge or one edge that's concave and one edge that is bellied and convex. And so you get like the slashing trailing point. But then you also get the you have like the hawk bill sort of gununting style if you flip it over or, you know, if you use it with certain backwards uh, motions when you're using it in forward grip. But it's all about that asymmetry to me and then here same thing uh or well same but different uh you just have a much stouter edge here here it's very thin and hollow ground up here it's hollow ground but it doesn't have enough space to get real thin behind the edge down here it is super sharp and it's going to split 
and cut and tear. But again, it's not it's not going to slice the way this slices. It's going to cut and and make those kind of nasty kind of cuts. So so I, I like that uh, in in a knife almost more than I like a dagger, or possibly more than I like a dagger. Uh, not that I don't love the symmetry of a dagger, but even in hand, the symmetry is not as uh, useful or pleasing as something that is set up for your hand. Um, anyway, any, any thoughts? Jesse, knife, knife, knife. Yes, I, agree, I couldn't agree more. Mm. Ground Fox says, I like the thrusting tip that doesn't run offline of the attack. Okay, so maybe you're not so into this right here because of its upswept nature though it's good for it's good for uh offline attacks like if you're coming in what was that that's a number eight or number seven number eight yeah uh different everyone's got different uh numbering but uh coming from the outside uh coming in any sort of arcing motion uh that tip is in a good spot but yeah i know what you mean about knowing where the tip is and you definitely know where the tip is maybe a little better on a knife where it's uh, centered and not upswept. Ground Fox says the bottom one is nice. It would slash enough for me. Yeah, this one is. I love this one. And he's not doing these anymore. Douglas Esposito. He's making these master masterpiece folders. They're pretty amazing. But uh, yeah, I love his roots are in the fixed blades as many uh, makers are. And I think they're awesome. Bigger Tigger 8. 12 good to have you here i love that turtle shell yeah i know me too uh I, i'm a big fan of that look and that material it reminds me of uh it's a nostalgic thing for me uh, lcv blades edge says i like them nice and robust yes you like them ni nice and robust well let's see do we have any nice and robust here i think we do i think we might do all right, uh, let's do this giveaway. Let's give away this knip, this knife. So I'm uh, I'm honored that uh, you're here uh, spending time with me, uh, perhaps along with March Madness or instead of March Madness. That would be uh, amazing. Yeah, uh, Jim just reminded me that uh, that is going on. Uh, never been uh, interested in it. However, uh, when I watch uh, basketball, with friends who like it uh, i always enjoy it uh but never enough for me to seek it out on my own all right so here we have it uh let's talk let's read off the gentlemen junkies these are five door ben belkin byron kennedy caleb townsend Ka uh, cam michael colin maison pierre edwin callow uh, gavin colitis jay mcconnell jesse tellis jocks knife jvf martin gamboa uh, Mr. VC256, Never Enough Knives 007, Scott Nelson, Sean Curry, Shane Miller, Stephen Michael Robert, Tony uh, Kim, V2, hello V2, uh, Northern Knives, and Will B. V2, by the way, full disclosure, is my dad. He just signed up to be a gentleman junkie. And a gentleman he is. All right. And uh, I'd also like to give a shout out to the other, uh, our other junkies. We have two tactical junkies. Uh, Christopher Brocious and James Moore. Thank you, guys. Uh, James is a frequent contributor right here on Thursday Night Knives. And, of course, uh, our traditional junkies, Cliff Scott and Tony 42 Rivers. I like that name. Hey, it's Tony 42 Rivers. That's a cool name. Okay, here we go. So it's the TS-125 by Tepe Designs and Tucson. Uh, that's D2 Blade Steel and titanium bolsters and micarta and oh yeah that's a buttery buttery action on that button lock so let's pull up that wheel and let's spin it and see who win it all right in three two one aha it's edwin callow Edwin, congratulations. Uh, have to uh, I love Edwin. Uh, it, we had a great conversation at Blade Show, and I love his collection of Emerson knives. Yowza. 
wow. And not just Emerson's. He's got a lot of, uh, he's got a number of other great knives, but Emerson is what he's known for. Now he'll be known for the TS-175. All right, Edwin, that goes out to you. Thank you for your patronage. And thank you one and all to all of y'all for your patronage. Uh, Michael Upchurch, good to have you here, Michael. Sup, guys? He says, well, what's up with you? Uh, just hanging out, talking knives with guys and gals. Bladetastic Knives, what's up? Uh, I'm going to be talking to this gentleman sometime. I look forward to that. Uh, he just got some, he's just got the most wicked collection of swords. You got to check them out. Oh, and by the way, he can use them too. Pretty well. All right. Uh, wait, wait, let me see something here. Yes, I wanted to show you this. Uh, okay. So I got something inspired by Scott Babb. Do you know who Scott Babb is? He's the guy who uh, who started Libre Knife Fighting. And uh, he's an uh, interesting guy. Um, he's going to come on the show at some point, but he was busy when I asked. But expressed interest. I can't wait. Uh, Libre Knife Fighting, uh, for those who haven't heard me blab on about it, is the type of knife fighting that uh, utilizes a tip down edge in uh pickal style knife or at least that kind of grip you don't have to have that kind of knife uh to use that kind of grip with the tip down and the edge in and what it uh it, it's a very realistically based system of uh fighting with a knife that takes into account the high levels of stress uh that occur during a knife altercation or during an, an altercation where you're going to need your knife to survive and and mostly uh nuanced technique goes out the window even if you've trained that technique for years uh and oftentimes people uh, uh revert to a sort of caveman uh you know uh behavior gross motor motions and so that having that tip down and that edge in really uh just takes it advantage of the arcing motions of the body and just the uh what you're most likely to do pound like a caveman well you got the knife there uh to do or the blade there to do maximum damage this by the way is the very super cool elvia v2 from turner cnc and this belongs to jock uh one of the names you just heard me read off on the gentleman junkie list uh this will be going to him uh after this weekend and it is so cool uh he let me check it out for a while i appreciate that uh yeah i would be very comfortable carrying this and that how did i get on to oh <laughs> that's right i was going to show you the knife that i was going to show you uh but scott babb is the guy who uh sort of uh started that system and sort of uh, codified it and all that and um he carries a folder uh, and practices drawing it and bringing it to bear in in Pakal style and doing his techniques. And this is not one of his techniques, <laughs> uh, but this is the knife. It's the Kara Kara Two uh, by Bird, which is also well, which is made by Spiderco. Uh, this knife is about the size of Endura, but I, honest to goodness, I think I like it better. And it could be the novelty of it because it's new and it's got the Emerson wave and it's got that differently shaped uh, opening hole, which uh, used to be a turnoff. Now it's cool that it works well. Um, but, oh, I think it's the tip. It, the blade shape, that is a true spear point, uh, spear shape blade there. Whereas the Endura, Delica, and Della series has, have that kind of a weird tip a little rounded off a little bit. I just think that this one is kind of self defensey And obviously, so does Scott Babb because uh, he uses it, pulls it out, uh, carries it in his pocket with the tip up, but the, um, you know, the possibility of it opening in the pocket is there. So you got to be careful. But uh, you draw it like this. You put the clip as if it's left-handed carry, and then you draw it like this. And as it comes out, you just grab it, and as you grab it, it rotates into that pakal grip in your hand. So now you have the tip down and the edge in for clawing. What do they call that? Uh, face etching. <laughs> it's a nice word. Face. It's a face etch, <laughs> and uh, you know, all sorts of 
pulling and stabbing uh, techniques, but a uh, really great knife. I, I decided to go for the serrations cause that's what I'm into right now. Uh, it just, it really, really, really does add on to the cutting life of any knife. Uh, even if it's soft, it's the lame steel or whatever. Uh, like this is eight CR 13 MOV and no doubt spider co knows how to make it as, or he treat it as well as anyone. Um, so it'll be fine for what I'm not going to use it for anyway. Uh, but that's what I really like about it. Um, that you have that Emerson wave that you reverse it. And then when you draw it, it just, you can, it's, it's less natural to keep it in that edge out. So it just sort of rolls into that position you need. So yeah, I'm digging it. Do you guys, anyone out there have a bird, a bird knife? I have not, uh, never had one of these before but i'm digging it it's a it's a pretty good pretty good type of uh frn and everything but uh it's a little a little rough around the edges it's like sharp on on the edge of the lock and uh a couple of places i wouldn't mind knocking down with sandpaper but all in all i i dig it mm. ah all right. Well, there it is. That's the only one I got this week. <laughs> New. Uh, poor me. Uh, me. So uh, let's see. What else do we have out here that I can uh, I can show you all? One, one, one or two of you. Let's see. Oh no, this one I already showed. Well, I guess I guess it's no secret. I love this here. Uh, so a couple of weeks ago, someone was talking about getting one of these, one of these not just Bowie's and was concerned that the three V version of this is so damn expensive. Well, uh, I'm here to tell you, you can get this a 40, 34 stainless steel. Uh, they have recently, you can find them now like pretty much everywhere. And I believe I may have mentioned uh, last week, that Midway or Chicago cutlery is a great way to go for these. Um, so uh, I would check it out. Uh, if you're out there and you're watching or listening and you were wondering, uh, yeah, they do have these and you can check them out. The 40, uh, 4034s, uh, not just Bowie's. Love that. And then, of course, since I opened the show with having this out, I'm going to show this off again the Prather war buoy. Now here's one that would be cool. If, if that long swedge were sharpened, uh, this would, this would be very pleasing to me if sharpened. Now, what would that require? I guess when you're building it, you have to leave yourself an extra quarter inch or something, eighth of an inch that you would end up sharpening off. So it would all be coming off at an angle, but again, it wouldn't have to be super thin. Wouldn't have to be, a very fine edge. It could just be a uh, a zero ground sort of scandy edge, like you get right here on the Necromance. So you see that scandy edge. You could do that here. I think that would be very cool. I think maybe we push, petition tops and we get them to we get them to go for it. Let's see if they'll do it for us. I don't know. What do you think? Anyone there? Am I just barking at the clouds? Yes, probably. Um, let's see here. Well, let's see. Ex Cato, the Enduro waved has a similar blade shape to the Caracara waved, but it has a flat saber grind instead of the full flat. Okay, that's right. I have noticed that because my wife has the Delica with the with the wave, and the PM2 also has that sort of Caracara um spear point uh yeah so i think you're right when they go for the emerson i think it's more considered self defensey so they'll they'll point make it pointier uh ray herman good to see you here ray uh i have a bird rescue knife rounded at the end uh full serrations great knife do you use it uh on duty ray are you a rescue guy uh fire and rescue or a paramedic um just curious, uh, or do you just like to have that uh, 
you know, not to worry about the tip. Patty's Nuts says, almost forgot I picked up a Hinderer Eclipse uh, 3.5 Harpoon Tanto Battle Blue Titanium and Blue Black G10 Working Finish S45 VN. Oh, that sounds awesome, Pat. Hey, uh, what's up with S45 VN? Does anyone have much experience? I used to, ha I had one knife with it and uh, I don't have that knife anymore. But has anyone noticed, uh, is S45 uh, noticeably different than S35 that you can tell? And then what is that difference? Is it tougher? Is that what it is? Is it a little more resistant to chipping? Because I know that that's what S35 had over S30. I was wondering if they're kind of going in that same direction. <laughs> Ooh, excuse me. Uh, just curious if anyone knows about that. Uh, S35 versus S45. Well, since I have a captive audience and a whole bunch of microtechs, I'm going to bust them out. I've uh, been carrying the amphibian all the time. Ray Herman, just have a full serration knife just in case. I got you. Um, yeah, that's a good thing to have, especially in the car. I have the um, off-grid knives, rapid, rapid uh, what do they call it? It, it's the off-grid knives, their rescue knife, and it's a little menacing. It's a little uh, sharp at the tip, even though that it's a rounded, you know, sheep's foot. It's a little, little dangerous. <laughs> uh, Craig Vincent says, it's so funny, Bob. I swear that uh, I swear I have a bird harrier two serrated Warncliffe in one of my shopping carts. The dilemma has been budget Spyderco's versus something from Spyderco entirely different budget line. Well, that is interesting. Uh, I I don't know, man. I I got to say, the bird, this bird, has been pretty pretty good. I've liked it. it it's super solid. I mean, it has. Uh, I mean, you can you can kind of flick it out. Uh, I can't spidey flick this without wrist. You know, no way. Uh, but you can flick it out. But it's really, really the lockup is super solid, and there's like zero play. It's very, very tight. Uh, well, its tolerances are very tight. It's not a tight knife. You can still do this one-handed too. This is a great one-handed close because of that 50-50 choil. Uh, also something that uh, the Endura does not have. So this 50-50 choil, uh, this spear point with the, uh, this reminds me a little bit more of a PM2 almost than an Endura. I know that's a crazy comparison, but uh, Mark says, I want the Kaiser Militaw in DLC S45. The Militaw, yeah. That's the one with the triangular opening hole, right? Uh, that That's a new one for this year, I believe, right? As, uh, Five Door says, S45 VN has been bulletproof for me. Exceptional edge retention and takes a laser edge. Uh, I'm far from an expert, though. Uh, hey, Five Door, I know you like. Uh, I know you like Strider knives and mixed Strider knives. Uh, uh, the guy we had on last night, who will be on in two weeks, uh, had busted out the most beautiful his like his recent Grail, and it's got it's got such a cool blade. Uh, and now I don't remember what had a special name. Uh, but anyway, it's a recurve Tonto, incredible uh, looking knife. So you dig it. Uh, oh, that. Oh, Jim told me that was in the bonus. Sorry, that was in the bonus interview. Five door. Oh, but five door can see it because he's a patron. So he's a gentleman junkie. So keep your eye, eyes peeled on that. You'll like it. It is gorgeous, man. Really nice. Uh, Mick Strider custom, I guess. Uh, Xkdoa Xkdoa says the Prather War Bowie is such a great design. It's too bad it's marred by the shadiness of Jeff Prather himself. Well, first of all, I don't know anything about that. So whatever that shadiness is, drop it in the comments. Uh, I'd be interested. Uh, but not knowing what any of that shadiness is, it's a Topps knife that. Uh, performs like a tops knife and it looks like this. So I don't, uh, I don't care about him. Uh, it's like, uh, this is a case that's easy for me to make that <coughs> separation of art from artist. It's not always easy, but in this case it is. 
Uh, but but tell me what the shadiness is. Tell me what the scoop is. I, I hate being the last to know. Uh, Northern Knives says, I found S45VN to be quite similar to LMAX. Massively superior to S35. Wow. Okay. That's great. Uh, that's great. Massively superior. You like you want to know uh, that you're getting something for it, you know, because there's going to be... Uh, it, it was not a nightmare grind. It was uh, a... Uh, I mean, I, I kind of a nightmare grind, but not. Uh, I know that there's one grind in particular that's the nightmare grind, but this was multi. Uh, uh, this was compound ground, uh, but it had a real wide front. It was a recurve and a tanto, but the whole front part of the tanto was just beefy. It looked oh, it was so cool. Craig Vincent says the birds look like they offer a lot for the price, especially for the specialized application. Yes, yes. I would say so. This was 48 bucks, I believe. 48 bucks worth every single penny and more. Uh, yeah, it's a great knife so far, you know. So here's the knife. Oh, I've been carrying this one a lot too. I haven't actually looked at them all together under the bright light. Uh, and then, sorry for the creepy Joe Biden whisper. And here we go. There it is. There's the there's the royal triumvirate of super cool uh, Microtex. Of course, I have uh, the other versions. Not of course, uh, but you know that I have them. So kind of. And then there's the clip point. I think I need another. I would like another clip point. SOCOM uh, of the modern variety with the serrations. Someday I'll trade for it. I'll figure out what I need to. Because I can't just keep buying Microtex. One does not do that. Uh, but it was really uh, nice trading for this. And I think I got bitten by that bug. You know, kind of almost feels like a free knife, uh, even because you're giving up a knife you're you're not even paying attention to. So in a way, kind of feels that way. Yeah, look at these. They're so great. He's got, uh, uh, Tony Marfione uh, has a great eye. He's a great designer. I mean, these knives are all so cool. Uh, this, of course, was not him, uh, but the fact that he took that knife on and turned it uh, from a coveted custom piece into something that uh, uh, regular schlubs could afford, or, you know, maybe not. <laughs> you know, it's still a, an expensive knife, but um, turned it into something that is more within reach anyway. Because uh, you get a, a Sebastian uh, uh, Berenji stitch, and it's going to cost a Borka blade stitch. It's going to cost you several thousand bucks. But it's going to be exquisite. That's for sure. Those things look like jewels. They look like jeweled pieces. <coughs> uh, Patty's Nuts says, got to go and make some knife money. Thanks, Bob and Jim. Hey, Pat. You have a fine evening, sir. Uh, we'll probably call it a little early on this evening at some point. Steve the Ripper, you need a, Shako uh, a Sakosha. Yes. Yes, I do. Steve, good to have you here. Uh, yeah, I do. I do need a Sakosha. There are a couple uh, uh, custom knife factory knives I need, uh, and that is definitely one of them. Uh, Anthony Kitchen says, uh, it's the new Microtech Elite Mini Plane. Wait. It's the new Microtech Elite Mini Plane Blade. So pumped it's in the mail. Elite. I didn't know that they've they're making an Elite Mini. I knew that they were making the Bravo Mini and that they just released that, but this is the Elite Mini. That's cool. I mean, I'm not I'm not tempted by the Mini, except I'm tempted by the old school minis. Uh so ugh. I don't want to have to get those. <laughs> Pat D's nuts says, hit that like button. Thank you, Pat, on the way out. I appreciate it. You're a gentleman. Uh, Stephen Clayton says, Tim mentioned you and, uh, had looked into another combatant on last Sunday's live. Uh, that I had looked into another. Yeah, I'm, I'm interested in the uh, in the new combatant he's got coming out with the, with the swedge and the pointier blade. Yeah, I'm interested in that. It is cool. Cool indeed. Uh, yeah. Uh, so, uh, Stephen, 
you got to let me know if you're going to get that one too. I, I'm assuming you are. Uh, life's tough. Get a sharper knife. Uh, this is the featured T-shirt of the week. Uh, you know, Jim, he's always banging out these cool designs for T-shirts. And you can go to the knifejunkie.com slash shop and you can browse. I think it's about 10 pages or no, no it's about 50 designs on I don't know how many pages, but uh, he's got a lot of designs that he's done knife themed and uh, we're featuring one each week. This is the one for this week. Uh, check it out. If if this one isn't your uh, your bag. Uh, there are plenty of others, and I know you will like one of them. Uh, so go check them out, theknifejunkie.com slash shop. Oh, I'm so sorry. See, this is what happens. Thursday nights, I start to get stuffy. Indeed, indeed. Uh, oh, this is a good one. Be sure to sign up for our newsletter. I I, I labor over it every Sunday. Uh, I, I say that a little bit sarcastically, but I actually, uh, it's something Jim has, has, uh, really urged, uh, urged me to do. And he keeps me honest about it. And, uh, it's a great, it's a great weekly thing. You get a newsletter, uh, with, uh, photographs and, uh, it's a little bit of food for thought and yeah, sign up for it. And that way you'll know if, uh, if society falls apart, and it's the only way we can reach you. I can still, you know, type up obsessive letters about my knives and send them to you. You know, I mean, what's that? That's the point of a newsletter, right? Uh, be able to contact people when it all goes down. Uh, also, we are going to be doing knife giveaway in the newsletter. This is a great new idea that Jim had. Um, and uh, so I'm not sure what the knife is going to be and exactly how we're going to do it. Uh, but I love this idea, uh, and it's a great way to, well, it's a great way for us to get people involved in the newsletter and for us to get as a, a good list just in case, you know, knife content isn't as popular in the future, uh, so we can still keep in touch. Um, so, yeah, go check out thenifejunkie.com slash newsletter and sign up. Craig Vincent, Bob, I've made about three real converts to the hobby this year. Good man. I felt such satisfaction today when a 62-year-old female friend chose from among my collection a cold steel Bowie spike with no coaching from me. Yes. Uh, that is cool. That is cool. It's also great to give uh, people who don't think they need a knife, but you know they need a knife, a knife. Uh, chief among them, the ladies in your life. Uh, it's good for them to have something uh, because... Because, yes, though, though women could, you know, a woman without training could be overpowered with a knife. Uh, yes, of course, a man without training, uh, a man with training could be overpowered with a knife. But uh, women have great minds uh, for recall. <laughs> and they will recall in a moment of terror that they have a knife and they will use it because they are a woman. And, and so it's good for them to have. I guess is my long way of getting to that. Uh, I'm really glad my mom carries one. Uh, my sister has one. I'm not sure how often it's on her. Uh, my wife always has one on her. I love that. Uh, I'm definitely going to pick up the Tonto version uh, he's releasing sometime. Really? The Tonto Combatant? Ooh. Yeah, that sounds cool. I like the sound of that. Loyal Group, nice to see you here, sir. I'm late, way late. Shocking. <laughs> yes, sir. It is getting late. Uh, but it's good to have you here, Loyal Group. Uh, X Cato says, sums up the shadiness around Prather. What does? What's what, wait, wait, what sums up the shadiness? Did someone say something? Someone's got to tell me what the shadiness is around Prather. Uh, I've seen him. I've only seen him once in one video where he shows his setup <laughs> for the for the Prather and and how he <clears throat> uses la his lanyard to switch grips. And I have to say it was fascinating. It was cool. Sorry about that. It was cool. I need more oxygen in the brain. It was cool and well done. And I honestly like you know most guys that you see showing off stuff like that, you're gonna there's gonna be a little few moments where you're like, oh come on, guy. So maybe I felt that way a little bit, but uh, no. But tell me what this, what is it? If there is a, uh, if there's a scandal, I want to know. 
and a loso, as my wife would say. All right. Let's see, Loyal Group. Me too. What's up with Jeff Prather? <laughs> I don't know. I don't know, but uh, we mentioned uh, the Prather War. We showed the Prather War buoy, and now I'm forgetting who uh, said, it's a great knife, too bad about how sketchy <laughs> Jeff Prather is. I'm like, I'm glad I didn't know because it, uh, and nothing's going to ruin my appreciation of that knife, uh, honestly. I don't care. It's not one of those things that I care about. It's a because uh, if it were... Um, you know, uh, if that knife were a, 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 a book about how to treat people better and it ended up he was a real jerk, or if that uh, were a, a charity and all of the money was going to administration uh, or something like that. But if it's just a knife and it's well and it's by a reputable company like Tops and I like it, I don't care. I don't care. Uh, like Caravaggio, you know, just just paint a painting for the church and you get away with it. It's all good. So uh, that's my philosophy. Uh, let's see here. All right. I got two new stories before we dip out of here tonight. Uh, we're going to call it an early night. I am uh, I'm feeling a little under the weather, and I also feel uh, as if uh, that is the thing to do. Uh, I want, But I do want to I want to point this out. A sword. I mentioned sword before with this right here. Well, they are also known, besides this uh, Von Temsky Bowie, and they they do an Arkansas toothpick in this style and a bunch of other uh, big knives. They're also really known for their peasant knife, uh, much in keeping with uh, with the Openel and with other, um, inex uh, like the American Sodbuster. Uh, Sword has the, their peasant knife, um, and it's hallmark is being super cheap and super easy to put together uh well they have uh they have made a fancy pants version of it and i think it's cool i think it's cool that's got the a damasteel blade or no it's a damastix what is this yeah it's a uh oh, damax blade steel so it looks like damascus or <coughs> or damasteel and that's got that beautiful wooden handle. Um, I think these things are cool. I just brought my uh, Openel home from work. I uh, have one, and it's pretty pristine at work. And I used it as a food knife for years, but uh, I've been using something else for the last several years. So I brought that home, and I'm going to get it wicked sharp. And I just think uh, the peasant knife and the farmer knife uh, setup is a cool thing. So it's cool to see this. And this is a friction folder. So that big tab uh, on the back of the blade uh, not only helps you roll it out, but it also, once you pinch it, push it into the handle, and it gets pinched between the two handle scales, uh, that's what helps keep it open. That and uh, a stop pin and the force going against the blade uh, as it should. Uh, plus, your thumb is on there to reinforce it. Uh, those are cool little knives. I've never owned one, but I've used one before. And uh, ah, that's kind of a cool one. I think it's cool. You mix it just like uh, Openel just came out with their uh, Forge version of the number eight. And it looks like uh, kind of the opposite. Instead of a fancy pants version, it's a roughed up one. Um, but still, I like it. I like that these uh, knives are still relevant. Loyal Group says, I bought a PWB second hand. Wait, wait, what's PWB? Uh, oh, uh, wait, what is that? Hang on, maybe maybe context. The guy I bought it from must have smoked a buttload of pot because the fragrance he sprayed on it completely polluted my storage. Oh, my God. So you got, you, wait, what's a PWB, though? Uh, I do know it smelled like weed. That's crazy. You know, for a piece of metal to show up smelling like smoke, it's got to be uh, there's got to be a lot of smoke in the air. Uh, Ryan Vest, hello everyone, hello Ryan, good to have you here, man. Uh, we are <laughs> we are talking knives, and I was just talking about the new Sford. Thanks for this awesome show, Bob and Jim Night All. Have a great week, uh, great weekend. Thank you, Chris. You have a great weekend too, man. I appreciate it. Uh, let's see. Uh, one last thing here, guys, uh, and then I'm going to call it an early night. 
Uh, James Brand. So the Klein, this is a cool knife uh, to me. This, uh, I, I, I like to bust on the James Brand for being hipster, um, but they do have some pretty damn cool uh, knife designs, and this Klein is no exception. Uh, this one, though, is going to be even cooler because in addition to that, oh, excuse me, in addition to that hollow ground drop point, really nice hollow ground drop point blade with that super high uh, grind, this one is coming with a uh, integral molten carbon fiber handle. And I think that that is pretty damn cool. Integral carbon fiber, not something we see too much of. And uh, uh, this with their crossbar lock and the deep carry pocket clip is a, I'd say it's a pretty, uh, pretty cool package. Um, and and uh, 3.4 inches on the blade steel is, is something I could do if, you know, it's not, in other words, it's in a good uh, uh, size area. And uh, yeah, I'm, I'm, I think it's pretty cool. Uh, the, the carbon fiber actually comes from ProTech, but not that ProTech. Yeah, it's a company called ProTech that makes the marbled carbon fiber. Um, and it is available now. So uh, if you're interested in this, uh, no doubt it's going to be pretty damn expensive. I don't know. Uh, the uh, the Knife News article did not say. But, uh, yeah, it'll be expensive, but it's still pretty cool looking, I think. Um, we do have an affiliate brand, uh, theknifejunkie.com slash James Brand. We need to get a James Brand knife here on the channel. I believe uh, I believe I did once uh, when Hero Stick sent me a box. I had one of those little colorful knives they look kind of like fishing knives and it was on a an integral uh aluminum frame uh craig vincent says bob do you have a cold steel tw no twist master they've been out of production for at least 10 years it's like a tactical open l on steroids you would appreciate it i have a few can i gift you one uh we can make a trade you want to trade uh i'll trade you something uh yeah because i always like those twist masters always wanted one and every once in a while, I'll see one on eBay. I should get that, and I never do. So, yeah, let's work out a trade, Craig. Uh, email me, uh, thenifejunkie uh, thenifejunkie at gmail.com. Email me there, and uh, let's work out a trade. Northern Knife says, not my words, abused his students. Oh, shit. Lied to rip people off thousands of dollars, had multiple yo acquisitions. Uh, in the military pedals conspiracy theories uh, he sounds like a nice guy wow uh okay but uh, all right designs cool buoys like that's his that's on his on his pro sheet designs cool bowie knives uh and has a cool lanyard way of holding it and then his cons sheet is much bigger unfortunately well uh thank you mike for that uh for that I like to know. I like to find out what what the what the skinny is on people, and uh, if that stuff is true, it's disgraceful. Chris Lopez, hello knifers, hello Chris. I like your with the eye. David Helka, nice to have you here, David. Uh, good to see you. I can't tell if you're laughing, crying. <laughs> uh, the James brand is probably five hundred. Serious and oh, oh my god, it's a car, it's it's carbon fiber, it's an integral carbon fiber, and it's a James brand. It'll be like, yeah, it'll be about forty thousand dollars and uh, your kidneys or something like that. All right, everyone, I'm gonna wrap it right here on this fine evening. It's been awesome having you around, uh, and and talking knives with you. Um, my Thursdays wouldn't be the same without you. Uh, be sure to join us on Sat, uh, Sunday, our usual interview day, Justin Burton of War Crown Forge. He's a great guy who, man, his knives are wicked cool. I'm not sure if you follow him on Instagram. I have for years, and uh, he's just making sweet, sweet knives. So I had an awesome conversation with him. Be sure to join us there. And, uh, and then next week, Wednesday, for the midweek supplemental, only here on the Knife Junkie channel. All right, for Jim, working his magic behind the switcher, I'm Bob DeMarco saying until next time, don't take dull for an answer. <laughs>